Good afternoon. We're convening the Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts on our 301 p.m. agenda. Uh, we have one bill on the agenda for decision making. For the folks in the audience, we're going to vote on this and then we're going to recess out and then thereafter go into our 3 p.m. agenda. So thanks for your patience while we take this quick vote before getting started. So up first today is Senate Bill 2, or excuse me, 3237 relating to agriculture, uh, which facilitates the control and eradication of invasive species and pests. Uh, this was a measure previously heard jointly with the AEN committee several days ago. Um, so the um, recommendation on this bill was to adopt the Attorney General's amendments, adopt the amendments from the Coordinating Group on Alien and Pest Species, and adopt the Department of Agriculture amendments. And um, this was already voted on by the TCA committee earlier. Uh, and I'll just mention, I appreciate, um, I think, a lot of the testifiers who came out on this and appreciate, I think, that each island has its own uh, base of species situation. The intent here is to keep the measure uh, moving along so it can uh, facilitate further discussion on this. And on the Wimmer side of Oahu and our side, we're facing a uh, invasion of little fire ants, cookie frogs, and other things. And we do have uh, some stakeholders in the community that um, we need to work with a little bit closer. So we hope that this will continue that conversation. Um, so with that, let me turn it over for discussion. Yes. Yes, Chair. I, I'm sorry I'm going to be voting no on this measure. Uh, and I'd like to read into the record, even though, but this is my statement, and this is on behalf of our Hawaii floral shippers uh, in industry as well, this bill is going to kill us. So here's the comments, and it's authored by Greenpoint Nursery and Hefna, and farmers like me who grow flowers. So this basic pre premise of this bill is totally wrong. The farmers are not the ones bringing in the cargo that bring in the invasive species. The military probably brought in the coconut rhinoceros beetle. The supermarkets bring in the produce. The florists bring in the flowers. And the homeowners are bringing in the plants through FedEx and Amazon, Walmart, and Home Depot. But instead of focusing on the real problem, we are making farmers and nurseries criminals and homeowners facing penalties. We cannot fix this bill enough through piecemeal changes to make it work. Instead, it will force the Department of Ag to work with a flawed law, so the department won't be preventing new invasive species from coming in or controlling the ones we have here. They will be forced to punish infested homeowners and farms. Where does that leave the Big Island for little fire ants? Where does that leave Oahu for coconut rhinoceros beetle? Are we fixing the situation or making it worse? Senator De La Cruz has an invasive pest bill that's moving along, and I think we all should support it. The farmers and the farm viewers will be supporting that one, and I close with that. Thank you. Uh, further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Vice right. Chair, uh, Chair, shall I Please. continue with the, with the votes then? Chair's recommendation on SB 3237 is to pass with amendments. Uh, Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes Excuse nay. Uh, Senator Elefante. Aye. Okay. And no Senator Kanuha. Aye. Okay. Senator Awa. Aye. Okay. Measures adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. So we're going to take us out of our 301 p.m. agenda and we'll open on our three o'clock agenda. Okay. So for our 3 p.m. agenda, uh, we're convening here in conference room. Uh, 224. Uh, we have a number of measures on the agenda today, so I really want to thank everybody for your patience as we went through that vote. Uh, we're going to try and limit um, uh, everyone's testimony uh, to make sure that we have time to get through everybody and make sure everyone has an opportunity to testify. Uh, there will be an opportunity for questions thereafter. Uh, so please make sure your testimony is, your written testimony is submitted, um, and we will get started here on Senate Bill 1119, uh, proposed SD1, relating to the Works of Art Special Fund, which appropriates funds for the purpose of engaging the community and developing plans for a potential future memorial, monument, or other appropriate means to properly honor and respectfully recognize the memory of those 
lost uh, in the August 2023 Maui wildfires. Testifying first is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Short, uh, Chair and members of the committee, uh, Karen Ewald, Executive Director for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. We stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you. Uh, and that's all the uh, testimony we had signed up already. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair and the committee, Angela Melody Young, testifying on behalf of CARES. I think there's a discrepancy because if you read the bill, it's about limiting the cents from one cent to 50 cents. So there's a discrepancy in the description of the bill versus the actual bill. So I'm not too sure if this is about the capital improvement appropriations or the Maui recovery. Thanks. Procedurally, um, this is about the Maui uh, proposed draft of the bill. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna um, read what I wrote about the facility because I think there's also um, something about art special funding that's gonna go towards the facility in this bill. Um, so the facility at the art museum collaborates three important offices, DBED, the film office, and the art museum. If the state is set on moving this measure forward, it may negatively affect the facility and the capital improvement appropriations, and this may ultimately affect artists, filmmakers, and their ability to contribute to arts and culture. Um, and the diverse collection of public arts consists of public works of art from a variety of paintings to various sculptures, and even an interactive showroom is available for viewing in the facility. I can just ask you to summarize. The time is... Oh, okay. So yeah, there were one or two other proposals very similar to this. And I don't know what's happening with the proposal, but it's so important to support the arts. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify this afternoon? All right. If not, are there any questions? If not, thank you very much, everyone. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2710, relating to culture and the arts, which establishes the White Leadership Awards Program to honor individuals who have made considerable and outstanding contributions to Hawaii. And testifying first is the Department of Accounting and General Services. Good afternoon. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, on behalf of Comptroller Regan, I am Dr. Adam Jansen, and I have the privilege of serving as State Archivist and Administrator of the State Archives. DAG stands on its written testimony in support of this bill and would encourage the committee to consider the long-term view, not just honoring these individuals for the year that their plaque is put up, but remembering them for posterity. Too often we see that these individuals get awards and then in a generation or two, their names fade into obscurity. So I thank you for this opportunity and I welcome any questions or concerns you may have. Thank you. Up next is the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Lee, uh, members of the committee. Uh, my name is David Harper. I'm a representative for DBED, and we stand uh, in support of our testimony. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. State Foundation stands uh, in support. Thank you. That's everyone we had who signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? Aloha again. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and the committee. Angela Melody Young testifying um, in strong support of Senate Bill 2710 Leadership Program Awards. So this act will set forth a leadership program award inspired by those that make a difference in the arts, business, entertainment, hospital, literature, music, public service, science, sports, and community engagement. May we be inspired by the courage of innovative solutions to improve lives and create a better Hawaii. Outstanding achievement in leadership should be celebrated. CARES is in strong support of this measure and would love to see more action on celebrating inspirational leaders, filmmakers, breakthrough artists. Putting art and leadership at the heart of a community enhances our lives by stirring hearts to articulate feelings and inspiring us to look beyond what we believe to be possible and to imagine a more vibrant and exciting future. Um, it also reminds us that we're all creative beings um, and we all can lead. 
And that whether we're making art or music, telling stories, making literature or music, we're all connected. Your time thank is you. up. Can I ask you to some? Okay, thank you very much. All right, is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? If not, thank you, everyone. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 3281, relating to culture and the arts, which requires that the State Hawaii Museum of Natural and Cultural History and State of Hawaii Museum of Monarchy mm -hmm. History boards of directors include um, two ex officio voting members to be selected from certain state agencies and does other things. Uh, testifying first on 3281 is Bishop Museum. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Aloha, Senators. I'm Ann Botticelli. I'm here as the chairman of the Bishop Museum Board. Uh, and I'm DJ Mailer, and I'm the CEO of Bishop Museum. You have our written testimony. I know time is short. Um, we did have a couple of suggestions that we wanted uh, the committee to consider. Uh, happy to answer questions now. Happy to answer questions later on after the rest of the testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. Uh, up next is Friends of Iolani Palace. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, good afternoon. We stand on our testimony. Um, we did offer a suggestion um, in the final paragraph of that as well, and, and uh, we'll be willing to answer any questions after we're through the hearing. Thank you. Uh, that's everyone who signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Please come forward. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and the committee. Angela Melody Young testifying in strong support. Or actually wishing to comment. I'm neutral, so I neither support nor I oppose this bill. Um, so in this measure, these are the standards and conditions for receipt of funds for the Bishop Museum and the Iolani Palace. And um, this act will set forth a board of directors from the Board of Land and Natural Resources, so the BLNR and the Board of Agriculture, and the president of the University of Hawaii. So um, Kares's comment is um, just that um, the University of Hawaii is going to be on the board, so is it also appropriate to consider the Board of Education because um, museums are tour destinations for elementary school children. Um, and museums play a critical role in displaying local culture, especially the museums in the state of Hawaii. They're so important to immersing us in Hawaii's culture and heritage at the premier natural and cultural museums of Iolani Palace and Bishop Museum. Daily programs allow visitors to discover more about Hawaiian and Polynesian cultures through live interactive presentations and exhibit tours. I could ask you to summarize. And for those who travel from around the world to make a trip to Hawaii, the Hiolani Palace and the Bishop Museum are four short places to visit. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Please come forward. If not, thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, I've got just a few for um, Bishop Museum. Thanks again for <clears throat> uh, your testimony. Um, in your testimony, uh, you suggest switching the language in the bill from two voting members to two non-voting members. Uh, is there a particular reason for that? Well, currently on our board, we do have provisions for ex officio non-voting members. We have um, everybody on our board currently serves without compensation and they're not official in any other capacity. So we have people from the University of Hawaii, for example, on our board, but they serve as in their personal capacities and not as representatives of the University of Hawaii. So we just think that it would be more consistent with our board practice and bylaws um, and wouldn't put anybody in any kind of potential conflict position um, between voting in their official capacity as a designee of the state and as a board member of the Bishop Museum. Typically, in a lot of cases, folks will just recuse themselves when there's a potential conflict. They could that, do that, yes. If they were voting members, you mean? Yes. Okay. They could. And then, um, secondly, you know, for a long time, uh, Iolani Palace has had, not to single them out, 
But um, as the other uh, section of statute similar to yours, um, in that section of statute, they've had a number of requirements that they submit reports to the legislature. They'd be subject to potential audit or uh, you know, a number of various things um, that they maintain a good standing, that sort of thing. Um, if we're applying all of those to Bishop Museum, to that section of statute, that's something that um, you guys are okay with? Yes, absolutely. Very so It's yeah. very appropriate. And then finally, um, in your, uh, in previous discussions, uh, you had a renovation project or series of projects um, that were sort of in the pipeline, including uh, Bishop Hall. Is there a timeline for that? Yeah, you're right. We do have a long list of CIPs that are in the limelight right now. Um, things like um, leaking roofs and all kind of fire suppression, Bishop Hall being one. There's no timeline for it right now. What we have to do is we actually have to remove all of the contents of the Bishop Hall before we can do anything in terms of getting someone in there to be able to look at what has to be done. As we know now too, there's also some toxic elements inside of that building that will not allow us to go in unless we are hazmat trained or hazmat certified. So we expect to have that kind of expertise coming into the building probably in the next, I'm gonna say five months, six months, depending on whether they are available in the state. Uh, and then from there, we can then put our staff, our scientists, our curators into the building to look at what's in there, designate what it is, and then take it out, and then we'll have to store it. At that point, might be a year or so from now, we would be able to get a designer in there. We already have a con uh, architect that is very well renowned in Hawaii that can go in and look at it and then give us a price on what it would take to restore it. Is there so, any sort of like back of the napkin ballpark on that? Well, t about 10 years ago, it was about 15 million. I remember looking at it when I was in another position. Um, right now we're saying that it's about- 25 roughly. million would take to restore it. Yeah. yeah. Presumably that'd be- um, Phased. Yeah, over yeah. a number of years. Phased. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then finally, you know, in the testimony, um, well, written testimony, um, there were other folks asking for a similar support to Bishop Museum, which um, and right now you guys are getting $7.5 million in the uh, budget, or at least for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And presumably, uh, assuming the budget's in a healthy place, that would continue. Um, Having additional resources to do some of these kinds of projects, which uh, I know for a lot of organizations is really important because it's fundamentally protecting collections and um, right. those sorts of things is, is pretty critical. Uh, for helping Bishop Museum, are there other ways you guys can either partner with other organizations or um, uh, help other smaller organizations that are out there that are a similar overlapping mission in right. ways that I think they might not have the same access to resources as you. Right, absolutely. And, and we do that now um, when naturally we come together as a community and we say, we'd like to do this um, and some are smaller than us. Um, but also one of the major initiatives is trying to give the other organizations the capacity and the wherewithal and know-how to get their own grants. And so, um, Janet Bullard, who's in charge of our institutional advancement, she actually went out and got a grant to be able to pay for some experts in grant management and get grant allocation. And those experts um, are now out there with the small not-for-profits that don't know how to get into the line, the lanes of funding. They're working with them now. So that's one way we can do it, is to raise money for people to go out and help them or if we know who they are and if we have common interests, then when we're going out for a grant, we can also talk to them and say, hey, you wanna join us because we have many partners on many of our grants um, and we become sort of the fiduciary body that sends out the money once we get it. So there's lots of ways provided we know who they are and have a discussion about let's do this together. And finally, uh, in your testimony, you had mentioned, well, the, the way the, the bill's currently written, uh, in order to maintain your state designation uh, you'd have two members that are appointed to the board uh, in this bill, um, assuming that uh, there would be some process for how that would happen and whether they're voting or not, I guess, irrespective of whether they're voting or not, uh, you'd maintain that state designation. 
that state designation allows access to all the funds that are being appropriated through the budget and so forth. Um, you have a very broad mission, um, even before, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago when the state even, you're even a, a quasi state recognized entity. Um, I expect you expect, I expect you hope that breadth of mission to continue. Right. Yes, very much so. Uh, and, it, and what's really not ironic, but wonderful is that in 1988, when we got this designation, the paper that was written about it and what it included is everything we're doing today. I mean, this was the first time I read it. Um, and it's serve all children, all adults, all of Hawaii, all of the Pacific, you know, it's, it's very inclusive, natural science, culture, you name it, it's all there. And so, yes, we'd love to continue to do that. Our collections are very, um, along the line of that. And in fact, um, of late this past year, we've been having a lot of schools come in, not only to have tours during the day, but also to look at opportunities for teachers to be taught with those collections um, so that they can be better teachers in their schools on science and culture. So we're actually expanding the use of what we were designated to do. So as long as you keep that designation, that's, that's perfect. number one thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, just keep a state designation. Yes. And regardless of what the state's doing, as long as you have that, you're able to access funds and really do whatever you, you want uh, in terms of your own mission. Yes. Um, so when it comes back to the bill, maintaining the designation and having uh, members that are um, flexible to your point in your right. testimony right. is important. Right, just to, just to expound on that, one of the things that we asked for and one of the testifiers here just remarked why not have Department of Education listed there. One of the, what we are suggesting that it be just any state agency or department or designee of that agency or department. It's just, if it's gonna be enshrined in law, um, it would be better to have it wide open. So if 10 years from now, we have robust partnerships with the Department of Education, we'd be able to put a designee from the Department of Education on there. It just allows us to get the mana'o and the partnership of whoever it is that we're really working closely with. And, you know, we don't oppose this bill at all. We just thought that these would be ways to make it better and allow us to do what we do um, with the support of the state, which we really do appreciate. You know, appreciate that. And the reason I ask all this is yeah. really to get it on the record because um, you're such a valued institution and pillar of the community and have been for such a long time. Uh, I think it's, it's important for everybody out there who uh, follows these sorts of things to understand that um, you know, that's uh, a significant part of our <coughs> Uh, heritage there that's captured in the collections and the stories that are being told and retold. Um, but also because, you know, obviously, um, both here and elsewhere in the testimony here, I mean, and elsewhere, uh, there are a lot of other organizations that do similar work. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to have a conversation about the, the amount of funding that mm -hmm. the museum gets that others do not. And we really want to make clear to everyone that um, there's, there's justification there, but also that there's accountability and transparency, um, which is, you know, the whole genesis of this bill. And also that we're going to be able to help those other organizations where we can, uh, with their own endeavors and, and missions. So, um, thank you for taking the time to have this brief discussion. And I have one more point, Senator, but go ahead, finish your comment. No, please. Yeah, it actually dawned on me that, um, we've been making some significant investments in digit digitization. So that entire collections, all of our 25 million collections are going to be digitized. What that means, and it's been private donors and, and funding, not state funding through that. What it means is that when we're done, which will probably be a five plus year journey, we're already started, that will all be publicly available to people in this state and elsewhere. So it's an investment on behalf of the state to get this all the back of the scenes, all the things that we can't get ready access to right now because they're physically assets, we'll have them in digital form. So that's what we're looking forward to. Thank you. Other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next measure. 
Senate Bill 3312 relating to the state gesture, which adopts, establishes, and designates the shaka as the official gesture of the state. Uh, testifying first is the Hawaii Bulletin. Oh, excuse me. Um, ID8 Nonprofit Board of Directors, Christian Whitney, in support. She's out. Oh, okay. is there someone else? Uh, uh, I don't represent, well, I represent myself. I, I'm the chairman of the ID organization. I've submitted testimonies. Okay. Um, were you wishing to testify today? No, please. Oh. Well, please come forward. Thank you. Chairman Lee, members, thanks for the opportunity to testify. My name is Steve Sue. I'm a Kaimuki resident. Um, for the past five years, I've been making a documentary on the Shaka gesture. So I, I, I can legitimately say I think I'm probably the world leading expert on the Shaka. So if you have questions later, I'm happy to take them. Uh, this committee specifically, and, I'm, and by the way, I'm, I'm very much in support of this um, Bill, and I do have testimony written. I'm gonna um, just say a couple of things quickly that are not necessarily in testimony that I think are very relevant to this committee in particular. Uh, transportation, the shaka, there's a specific shaka that is called the kinipopo shaka. Kinipopo means righteousness in Hawaiian. And um, this is a, a, a gesture that's used in driving. So driving, it's okay, I, I'm so sorry I cut you off. All of this reduces road rage, and I think that's very key to the efficiency, safety, um, and keeping paradise on our roadways. Uh, culture is important, certainly it's, it's our story here, it should, be, it should be kept here. But most importantly, I think as an as a art object, uh, there are countless companies that make their living and livelihood off of making Shaka products and exporting them around the world. Uh, I challenge you to go into any ABC store and not see Shaka. To summarize. I'm done. Thank you, guys. I'll take questions <laughs> later. Mahalo. Thank you. Um, that's everyone who had signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure this afternoon? Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and the committee. Angela Melody Young testifying in strong support. This act will set forth a statutory provision to designate the shaka as the official gesture of Hawaii. In Hawaii, the shaka sign expresses friendly messages and more. As the story goes, <coughs> that ubiquitous gesture goes back to the early 1900s when Hamana Kalili worked at the Kahuku Sugar Mill. He operated the presser to feed sugar cane to process its juice. One day, Kalili's right hand got caught on his, and his middle and index and ring fingers were crushed. After the accident, the plantation owners made Kalili a security guard for the train, which ran between Sunset Beach and Ka'a'ava. Part of his job was to prevent kids from jumping on the train and taking joy rides as it slowly approached and departed Kahuku Station. If Kalili saw Kolohe kids trying to jump on the train, he would yell and wave his hands to stop them. The kids adopted that gesture, and it became the signal to indicate that the security was not around or not looking and the coast was clear for them to jump on the train. Cares is in strong support of the shaka with such an inspirational meaning to the gesture. Thank you. Uh, up next, please come forward. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, aloha members of the legislature and also this committee. My name is Mailani Makainai and I'm the descendant of Hamana Kalili. Um, I have family photos to share if you'd like to see. So particularly my great, great grandfather, Hamana Kalili, known as the originator of the Shaka sign. Um, there he is. Um, today, I urge the legislative committee to honor him in SB 3312 as the Shaka's originator, a recognition previously proclaimed on June 16th, 1986 by Frank Fossey, uh, then gubernatorial candidate, Frank Fossey showing uh showcasing a deep-rooted acknowledgement within our community that photo is yeah right there erasing the unique attribution of the shaka to a native hawaiian would undermine our collective embodiment of the aloha spirit essential to hawaii's identity our family intertwined with the shaka represents positivity unity and the aloha spirit shaping our islands Acknowledging the Shaka's origins and its connection to Native Hawaiian culture respects our ancestors and protects our cultural heritage. I advocate for the bill to affirm Hamana Kalili's legacy, educating on the Shaka's deep cultural roots, thereby enhancing its significance beyond a mere gesture. 
It symbolizes our island's history, kindness, and welcoming spirit. I Could earnestly ask you to summarize, please. Oh, Colin, wait. Oh, sorry, I almost bowed. <laughs> I earnestly request that the legislature re recognize its true Hawaiian origins, honoring not only my great great grandfather, but our shared history and values. Mahalo for your consideration, our head heritage, and deeper implications of this recognition to Hawaii. So I support the bill with the amendment. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Ernest Kalani Makainai, and I'm the great grandson of Tomonan Kalili. I do support the bill too with amendments. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay, anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Good afternoon, Senators. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. My name is Russell Homa with APEC Kauai, and uh, I'm glad that we have, there's all these crazy things going around the world right now, so this is probably the happiest moment to having this bill, the Shaka bill, keep everybody with unity, aloha and righteousness, but I'd like to word, put one more word in there is uh, Akamai, because we all understand what Shaka means and we're doing that gesture to share with the others and that we understand you and you understand me. So I think that putting that Akamai word after that Pono and righteousness will show that uh, we're as Akamai, we're smart because we understand and that's what Aloha means to give in Aloha globally. And I've been using that icon with Shaka, with APEC Hawaii, with global leaders, ambassadors, diplomats, uh, heads of the state, scholars throughout my career. So uh, even the European Union loves that. I see the European Union leaders doing Shaka now. So I think we had a big uh, influence globally with, uh, with APEC as well as the Asian communities here. So I think putting that word Akamai in there, it's gonna put us in the map too. Thank you Thank for you. giving the opportunity. Okay, anybody else? Please come forward. Hello, Chair and Vice Chair. My name is Sean Laveau, Hawaii resident, and I support the bill. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify? Going once, going twice? All right, are there any questions? Um, real quick, just for, um, I think, uh, the descendants, uh, Forgive me, I get your name off the top of my head. Um, I just wanted to ask, you could come forward just for a sec. You had uh, spoken about amendments uh, to the bill. Can you just highlight what that was? Oh, the amendment, I just wanted our ancestor's name to be a part of this bill because there's no mention of him in this bill currently in its current state. For, okay. Yeah. For the record, can you just state your name again? My name is Mailani Makainai. Thank you. Yes. And Tom I know from Papa down to Junior. Yes. Oh, nice to see you. Okay, if there's no further questions, let's move on to the last measure, Senate Bill 2037, relating to state holidays, which designates the day of the second new moon after the winter solstice of every year as the Lunar New Year and establishes it as a state holiday. And testifying first is the Office of Collective Bargaining. With comments? That's everyone we had signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? Aloha again. Chair, Vice Chair and the committee, Angela Melody Young testifying on behalf of CARES in strong support. Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year is a very celebrated holiday around the world. Reflecting on recent events, the celebration in Honolulu is also a lot of fun. The two week celebration includes family and friends, feasting and fireworks, parties and parades. Although there is rarely a set program for Lunar New Year celebrations, a few days of the holiday are associated with rituals and festivals. The days or weeks leading up to Lunar New Year are also when the community decorate with red. Red paint on the doors of businesses and homes, red paper decorations, and red lanterns. Red is a color of joy, blessing, and prosperity in the Chinese culture. A few weeks ago, a chef, Grace, and a restaurant owner from FET did a policy and culinary arts experience at the city council to teach us about the Chinese culture. Um, and it was very um, fascinating to learn about um, 
the um, Chinese New Year's and the culinary arts. So I ask you to summarize. Um, we're in strong support of the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? Last bill on the agenda. All right. If not, thank you, everybody. Um, any questions? Uh, recognize the state archivist is here and you did not testify in this measure and the state foundation chair, but it, um, uh, you have no obligations since you didn't testify in the measure, but uh, I did have a couple of questions. Uh, maybe you can stick around uh, on this particular measure after the fact. Okay, uh, so with that, uh, why don't we take a quick two minute recess and then we'll go into decision making, recess. Good afternoon. We're reconvening the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and Arts for decision making on our 3 p.m. agenda here in State Capitol Conference Room 224. Up first, we had Senate Bill 1119 relating to the Works of Art Special Fund, which appropriated. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, actually, it's technically uh, with amendments. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we had a proposed Senate draft which would appropriate funds for the purpose of um, engaging the community on Maui to. Uh, start the conversation on a potential future memorial or monument or other appropriate means of recognizing those lost in the August wildfires. So the recommendation is to adopt the proposed Senate draft. So we'll be passing Senate Bill 1119 with amendments. Any discussion? Chair's recommendation on SB 1119 to pass with amendments. Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator Kanu. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Okay. Measures adopted, Mr. Chair, with five votes. Thanks. Moving on to Senate Bill 2710 relating to culture and arts, which establishes the Hawaii Leadership Awards Program. I would like to move this on uh, with amendments, adopting the recommendation of the archives to establish a formal archives of awardees and their stories. Um, and secondly, on page three, line seven, adding or designees. So those presenting the awards have the op opportunity to uh, designate someone else in their stead if they're unable to make it. Any discussion? Vice Chair? Okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 2710 to pass with amendments with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Hearing non measures adopted. Five votes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Moving on to Senate Bill 3281 relating to culture and the arts um, regarding the uh, State of Hawaii Museum of Natural and Cultural History and State of Hawaii Museum of Monarchy uh, Boards of Directors. Uh, we'd like to pass this with amendments. Um, we're going to, and first of all, appreciate everybody's um, patience uh, for the discussion on this one. Um, it was really helpful having folks here to talk about this. And we'd like to add in a, an appropriation into the measure for $5 million uh, for uh, the, uh, toward the renovation of Bishop Hall, uh, which was discussed. Um, secondly, um, we'd like, on page three, we'd like to uh, change the language to read, shall include two ex officio non-voting members to be selected by the board representing state agencies and departments that are in direct partnership with the museum on projects that benefit the state of Hawaii. And we'll apply the same language to Iolani Palace and reflect the changes throughout. Uh, thirdly, we want to add into the measure uh, for the Bishop Museum section, the same accountability and transparency provisions that currently apply to Iolani Palace and statute, um, which were in session law previously, but we're putting them in statute uh, so it's clear and there's consistency. And finally, to address the issues of um, other local organizations better competing for grants and funding, we'd like to amend page five, line 14 to read Museum of Natural and Indigenous History. Um, which won't change anything for Bishop Museum itself, um, but will allow it to continue to receive uh, state funding and the state designation uh, for the 7.5 million they're currently getting in the budget, as well as the $5 million in this bill, but also allow other organizations in the community to better compete and identify their specific niches of uh, cultural uh, uh, focus. So uh, that was a lot. 
Uh, any discussion on this one? Yeah, so the appropriation will be going to the agency, the ARCA, or to all the three individual units? Um, this will be going to, um, technically, to the State Foundation on Culture and Arts to be distributed to Bishop Museum. Okay. All right. Mm. Chair's recommendation on SB 3281 to pass with amendments with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair, with five votes. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Senate Bill 3312 relating to the state gesture. Um, which adopts, establishes, and designates the Shaka as the official gesture of the state. Uh, we'd like to move this on uh, with amendments. Uh, we'd like to add a directive to the State Foundation on Culture and Arts to consider developing a public work of art related to the Shaka and its history to be displayed in a prominent location for residents and visitors to Hawaii. Um, apparently there's one on Kauai, which uh, is rather large and prominent, but uh, uh, maybe we can find a location for another one. Um, and then uh, in the committee report, uh, we'd like to reference the testimony of, I think, some of the descendants of the originator, um, and we'll note for the next committee to take a look at how to properly um, phrase and, and address um, that recognition uh, in this, maybe the purpose section of this bill. And then finally, we add in a defective date so we can figure out all that uh, as it goes on to the next committee. So, yeah, as it goes on to the House. Uh, any questions, comments? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation on SB 3312 is to pass with amendments with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Hearing none, Vice Chair. I mean, Chair, measure is adopted. Thank you. Moving on to Senate Bill 2037 relating to state holidays, which designates the second new moon after the winter solstice of every year is the Lunar New Year. Um, we'd like to pass this forward uh, with amendments. Um, adding in a defective date, just noting uh, this will go on to the Ways and Means Committee um, and noting some of the testimony regarding uh, potential um, collective bargaining issues. Um, we just want to make sure that that gets sorted out appropriately. Any discussion? Comment. Uh, we'll be voting no on this one according to BNF's comments. It says it would cost $16.9 million. So I'll be voting no based on that. So noted. There's okay. no further discussion. Vice Chair. Okay. Chair's recommendation on SB 2037 to pass with amendments with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no notes noted for Senator Awa? Okay. Um, it, for the Vice Chair, I will be voting with reservations. Let me take the votes again. Um, Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes with reservations. Senator Elefanti. Aye. Okay. Senator Kanuha. Aye. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're adjourned. Thank you.